Welcome to Circuit Valley. This video is going to be about soldering and doing PCB assembly at home and I'm going to show you some of my hand assembled boards and the tricks and the techniques which I have learned throughout the time. Also learned other people with whom I have associated. So these boards which you see in front of you, they are all hand assembled including this big BGA and this BGA and this QFP package and including all these components. They are all hand soldered and even this camera sensor and its components in the back they are all hand soldered and this appears to be IMX290 camera and there is even better and smaller camera sensor with IMX477 that's, that's also I have hand soldered so this is just to show you that even with the hand soldering you can achieve a decent results and achieve decent consistency and quality if you are patient enough first thing which you need to understand with the soldering is that uh, my trick with this good finish is that you would need a decent amount of flux and you would need a good quality flux and uh, I have experienced different kind of flux including which are absolutely known and, uh, and well named brand Kester, Amtech and everything you can imagine in the end I settled myself on uh, Rosen, activated Rosen flux and activated Rosen is just simply dissolved in alcohol and filled in a bottle like this this bottle has activated Rosen dissolved in alcohol and this Flux looks like something like this, a little bit yellowish liquid and it works really well. So flux is really important and uh, what next? People say that uh, on internet people say that you cannot really solder with lead free solder but uh, in my lab I only use lead free solder even the solder base which I use is lead free and the solder wire which I use is lead free. The key is to use really good quality solder and I'll show you which solder I use. So this is the solder which I use from Setnol, it's a German company and uh, it has 95.9% tin, 3.8% silver and 0.7% copper. Silver is very important and silver make it flow better. As additional tip, silver is also really important for soldering some kind of ceramic packages because if, you do, if your solder does not have silver in it then you will not be able to solder them because your solder will suck all the silver off the ceramic package and which will definitely cause damage to your ceramic packages. And so this HF32, it appears to be currently in production and it's not, it's definitely lead free and it flows really well. One little suggestion about the application of solder flux, I use this bottle with the metal tip on it. With the metal tip, even if your joint is hot, for example, if you're soldering here and joint is hot, you can still apply the flux right here and you don't have to apply somewhere else and let it flow all the way. Metal tip is really important. I have tried flux pens. I have tried I have tried flux brushes, everything I have tried and uh, first of all with the brushes they jam up once the rosin dry there and alcohol evaporates so you will not be able to use them and the uh, solder pen is also have similar problems if you are a heavy user then you will need something like this some heavy duty solution this bottle not from China I used to use Chinese bottle and they used to break all the time so you can see this bottle is from a company called mendapumps.com it available on Mauser it costs around 10 cost around 12 euros or something like that made in USA really high quality flux bottle and it is primarily used only for this application comes with a metal nozzle and it works really well you may need to adjust the nozzle side depending on how much flux you have in your uh, depending on how much rosin you have in, in your alcohol so that you need to watch out for one thing I can suggest for example this kind of boards when you have large enough area to solder then you can use stencils and then you will need solder, solder paste or something like that and problem with these kind of boards is even with the solder paste and stencil you would need to apply a lot of heat from the top if you only have single source of heat for a heavy board like this which you see on the top this is a PCI board of my for the ultra scale FPGAs and this board is a six layer board large massive ground and power plane running on the internal layers I also have 14 layer boards and they are all basically made of copper all the way through what is thus to our PCB it makes the soldering hard for that as a solution I can suggest that soldering of these kind of boards you first of all use stencil otherwise you will not get this consistent finish of solder paste if you see in this board it is soldered by hand so you see sometimes solder on these uh, tips sometimes more sometimes less which makes your soldering job look a little bit uglier and if you see here it is all the way through consistent all the way everywhere there is a same flux for example these inductors they have same amount of flux they are all soldered by hand and even the symmetry is correct they all have similar gaps between them so this kind of a result if you want to achieve, for example, uh, 
if if this kind of result you want to achieve you have to use stencils it is very very hard to get consistent result with hand and once you use stencil as i have previously suggested have massive copper plane so if you try to solder this area rest of the pc will quickly suck heat away and it will first of all you need to apply a lot of heat for long of period of time which may damage your component especially burn these capacitors and second you may not be able to solder at all or you may create dry joints and for that generally what people do who can afford they will have a preheater warm up the board from the bottom maybe bring up to a temperature of 120 130 or something like that but you can use cheap heat plates as well so put heat plate in the bottom apply hot air from the top even applying soldering iron from the top would be easier because this as i said is a heavy board with lot of copper in it large board and soldering on these kind of boards is is problematic for example some people want to solder graphic cards and that is the primary reason they cannot solder because it's a massive board lot of copper in it component have lot of thermal mass they are specifically designed to carry or spread thermal mass around and uh, with that you would need a second source of energy other than your soldering iron or a heat hot air gun i'll show you what i use i use a small thing this is the thing what i use it's a small heat plate i think it's 10 by 10 cm from a chinese company and you turn it on and it will heat up to your required temperature and uh, what happens is after that you put on your pcb put you put your pcb on top of it and let it warm up to the temperature which you set generally i keep it under 200 degrees because otherwise your pcb may get damaged and then you can apply heat from the top for 320 330 degrees and it quickly reaches the soldering temperature and then you can easily remove your pcb generally i would not put the complete pcb on it otherwise i would need tools to assemble i generally leave it like that so that i can hold it using tools or or maybe by hand and stuff like that this is the trick to solder large massive boards like this and uh, this this board doesn't fit on it so i have a side stand and side support for it and stuff like that so that it doesn't fall off so i'll show you one more trick this is the board we will try to solder on camera i'll show you a trick which i have been using for many many years now to solder smd components real fast so what do you have to do generally the problem with soldering smd component is that smd components are lying on the table or you take them take them out from the tape i generally solder two or three types of component you can see there is one capacitor and one resistor lying there so i know this is capacitor and this is resistor if there is one more transistor lying here you will not mix them up so in theory you can have multiple components lying on your table spread you can pick one component after another as needed to be able to solder them you can use various type of soldering you can use various type of tweezer to pick up components but i have better trick up my sleeve i'll show you generally these these tweezer with this hook with the, this hook kind of shape in the end does well i have thick tweezers as well they also do really well and i have really thin very fine tweezer from lenstrom they also do very really well okay so this j kind of this j shaped tweezer does really well this is from company called knipix also german company you see the part number 920 920253 and this tweezer this also works really well really thick tweezer you can really put lot of force with it this is also from a german company knipix 92 Two two three five. This is really fine tweezer. You will be able to pick up really fine components with it, and enjoy yourself with it. So this tweezer this is from Lindstrom. Com part number is SS SASL, and I have one more tweezer which is my favorite tweezer. I'll show you. So this is my one of my favorite tweezer. Is from a company called. This is the company name Erem E R E M, and that is the part number A A S A, and this also works really well. You can see how thick it is. and it is very it is very very rigid it doesn't budge even if whatever you do with it for example this lindstrom it is very very fine but it's 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 but its flanges are not that rigid and it budges here and there so these kind of tweezers i have and they are really useful but for smd soldering you do not necessarily need tweezer the trick is that my soldering iron is hot and you see a little bit solder there and if you use the surface tension and uh, and holding power of a solder so you don't necessarily need the tweezer what people generally do they take some flux apply take pick up their tweezer pick up one component take some solder and then solder one side of the component okay and then flip the board maybe 
shoulder other side of the component so this method is useful it is very very slow very very slow because you have have multiple steps involved i'll show you a better trick it involves yeah of course you would need in my trick you would definitely need lot of flux application of flux is necessary otherwise you cannot shoulder you take and what is special in this method is you have wire in your hand wet the tip a bit you pick up the component using the solder itself solder will hold the component properly because of the surface tension you have the component in your tip and you can solder any which way and what do you do is you use the wire as a guide and apply heat to both of the sides and that's how you solder a component within few seconds if you get used to of this tricks and you can e easily quickly solder maybe i'll show you one more time i'll take one capacitor capacitors are easier to solder because they have sides so you go from the side and leave it like this so one capacitor one resistor is solder within a second and we have it there maybe i'll show you zoomed in bit because with this trick what is special is because you are using surface tension you are almost certain that both of the pads are soldered there is no dry joint because both of the heat, both of the pads pull the components into the place if one of the pad is appropriate not appropriate then you will see there is solder joint problem so i'll show you a zoomed in bit so both the components are appropriately soldered maybe i'll clean the pcb a bit so that you can see it better so both of the components are absolutely soldered so this is my trick this trick this fast soldering trick of components only work with two leaded part if you have like a regulator with three or four leads then you have to use tweezer and align it and everything else that is pretty much generic so that's it for this video i hope i was able to contribute something to you and thank you for watching you can visit my website www.sakirvelli.com